Hey guys, and I'm back today with yet another video, and you may be surprised because, hey, I got two in a row. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty good. So what are we going over today? We are going over some minor little tricks and uh, how to use some really useful tools uh, in 1.14 specifically. You listen to me, 1.14. Got it. I'm going to put 1.14 in the title. Some of it works in 1.13, but... It's just not polished enough until you get to 1.14. So what are these cool tricks? Let's just start doing them. So let me give myself a command block because, of course, I am going to be a big proprietor that you should always use functions. But when you're testing something in-game, like a quick little code thing, then just use some blocks or whatever. But then eventually it's got to go to got to go to the code. Um, so let's see. So I can do, let me create a scoreboard first. And this is a medium to advanced kind of thing, but it's very useful. Um, it, but even some uh, more advanced players that haven't gotten into 1.13 as much don't know this stuff as well, so they might find this pretty useful because it's like it, it'll take your creations to the next level. So let's go ahead and go with uh, defense. All right, uh, let's go ATK. All right, let's pretend I'm making a. Um, I'm making a RPG. Now this is going to be attack, uh, and let's also add defense. All right, so now we got two stats. All right, so now I'm going to do one trick here. So give at P diamond chest plate. I'm gonna give myself some armor, and this armor, this is a fake tag. Not everybody knows this, but you can create fake tags. So I can do ATK colon one, DEF colon ten. All right. Let me make this a weird number, like six, fifth, 16. There we go. So this item actually knows those two things I gave it because you can put fake tags. So if I do slash data, get entity, at S, which this is one of your most useful tools for navigating MBT. Get to know it, data get. Data get entity at S. You can only pick one entity when you use it. Will tell me all my information. Now I'm looking for something that is in my hand or in my inventory, so let me switch it to inventory. Now that I'm only looking at my inventory, everything below this line where it says Cloud Wolf Yellow, uh, this is stuff in my inventory. And if you see, the diamond chest plate has a tag of defense 10, attack 16. Now you may be wondering, why do we save that? Are we just going to say, well, if they have defense 1, then put 1. If they have defense 2, then put 2. No, this is a lot cleaner. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on, okay? Then we're going to do that again, and now you'll see that the diamond chest plate says slot 102B. So we can do something pretty cool here. So let's go inventory. Now let's try and get to that place, and we can go slowly as we check. So we want to find something. Well, if I do zero, uh, since inventory, you see this bracket, right? This means it's an array, okay? So if you see a bracket, that means you're thing that you're talking about is an array and the number that you put in between the brackets when you type it here is going to be what element in the array so zero will give me the first item which is a command block and one will give me the second item which is a chest plate second thing in my inventory now that's good and all that's 1.13 but the thing is if i have a third item right here well now it's no longer seeing the chest plate it's seeing the golden shovel so that's not useful we have to be able to find a specific item in the array so we are going to try to find a specific item and the specific item has to have b in slot 102b all right so this is looking for an item that is in slot 102b now you can use this so when i do that it'll pull up this item the diamond chest plate slot 102b so it found the right mbt to match it and it goes here now you can do some tricks with this so you don't have to specify each slot here you can probably i haven't done a lot of testing but i could probably do this tag dot def you put a dot every time you see a curly brace so tag dot def uh ten uh possibly Let's see, slot one uh, tag dot ATK 16, possibly not. Um, but the, the important one that you're able to check for is slot 102B. That's like you can check for slots. So that'll, that's, that helps you. It would be nice if I could also check uh, it for things that have a specific type of tag. But uh, for now, the checking for a specific slot is good. So now that we do that, it gives us this. Now we need to go deeper. So we're here. 
Now we need to go deeper. So we see this brace. So we put a dot right here. Now we go to the next place we want to go to. We want to go to tag. So we see tag. So we type tag. And then we see a colons with a brace. So we put a dot. Now that brings us to defense 10 or attack 16. So we want to isolate one of those. So let's go with attack. And now it gives me 16. So what I get out here is I want to be a number because I want to get that attack and put it somewhere. So that's going to be good. That's part of what we need. The next part is where are we going to put this? So we have that attack scoreboard. So let's go uh, scoreboard objective, set the play sidebar, ATK. So we're putting attack on the sidebar. Now we need to grab that 16, put it on my score. So we're going to do execute, store, result, score, at S, ATK. So that's going to store whatever we come out afterwards onto the current person who's playing the commands, ATK scoreboard. And what command we will run is this one, uh, this one, because this one results with the number that I have on my armor for ATK. And that's exactly what I want to go on. So when I play this, it'll come up with 16 and 16 will go on to my ATK score. So that is really cool. So we can use this to store some information like stats on an armor hidden that no one can see or showing you can like display it in the lore as well but it's hidden stats that can be any number and then we can grab those stats back so we can get it back so that's great the next thing we will need to do so that'll that's grabbing it so the next thing we want to do is change the attack so what if i want to make my attack become a different number on the item so let's take this pathway right and let's use a different method of execute store so we have execute store results again we're only seeing results you can pick results for whatever number that comes out at the end is what you put on or success which will just be boolean one or zero but let's do results so results now this time we're going to store the results we can store it to either a blocks data which is less commonly what i use it for boss bar that's kind of useful for varying boss bars but i showed this in 1.13 how to do this in previous videos to a scoreboard no it's not what we want we want entity now the trick is that i think maybe you can do this in 1.13 but i know you can do it in 1.14 i haven't tested it in 1.13 but you can actually store some stuff onto player data even though doing slash data merge uh if i try and do this it will come up with an error because you are unable to modify player data, but you can modify it using execute store result entity at S. Then we pick the pathway that takes us to the item, uh, the thing we want to change. So we're changing the ATK. Then you have to pick uh, some kind of number. So let's go up here. We don't know what type this is. Uh, I would say, I would guess integer since it doesn't say the type. If you see a B, it's a, it's a, um, would that be a byte? I believe that's a byte if you pick B. But we're just going to pick integer to be safe. Scale, we're going to pick 1. All right. So scale is going to take whatever your output is, like th like how we said before. Like before we saw 16, stick it onto the scoreboard. This time, we're going to see some number, and then we're going to stick it onto the item data. But we can scale that number right here really easily. So scale, which helps you, so like, uh, because in the game, if you want to divide things, like 1 divided by 10, your answer is just going to be 0 because it doesn't do decimals. But if you use a scale of 0 0.001, then you can get decimal values onto the data. So this is used for like um, entity motion. I have a video on item launching. That thing's are really useful for using scale, smaller scales. But anyway, so we're going to use 1. Then we're going to do something. So what do we want to put? What do we want to change this number to just to prove it works? Let's go with, let's see, scoreboard, let's just do, um, say, uh, let's go if entity at E. So the if entity will return how many entities match the criteria. So that says that there was 59 entities in the world. So if I use this data get that we had before, It now, and I can even show you the whole item, it now has an attack of 59. So you can use that to go back and forth between 
um, grabbing the number off of the item and putting the, a new number on the item. And I do something similar to that with my guns, and I know I seem to be <laughs> promoting my new zombies server quite often, but it really has a lot of crazy good uh, coding and stuff in it. Um, but let me show you an example of grabbing and storing and stuff. So this one has an example of storing because what I'm storing is I'm storing damage. Now you would notice that um, the dam I can store a number on for the damage and when I have a damage of a big number, right, what it'll do is it'll be like, well, if it's a big number then the thing has very little health left on it, right? So you'll see like a red bar. And then when your number is a small number, it'll be a green bar. So when I reload, uh, you will see that the item disappears. <laughs> let me go into this mode so that it works. All right. And let me pick one that has a long reload so that uh, you guys can really see the effect. Here you go. This one is <laughs> typically a personal favorite just because of how crazy it is, Death Machine. But you will see the reload time on it very clearly. You can see that bar really slowly increasing. And the reload ends right when the bar hits its max. Um, now, I'm not going to go into details of how I do that and how the guns work. But the point is I'm using this execute store thing right here to do, I do run scoreboard players get at S and then some scoreboard here. I use one of these scoreboards, whatever, it doesn't matter. But I grab a number from a scoreboard, store it onto... Instead of using inventory, I use selected item, and I store it onto the selected item's damage. So then that number counts upward, downwards from 25 to 0 to make that slider go up. Um, so that's basically how I do that. So this is something that's really useful. And there is, oh my goodness, almost infinite pro possibilities with execute store and all these great new things that you can do. Um, Personally, I would set it up for a, um, I would use like an R on an RPG, right? You can have armor store special stats onto the armor's MBT so that I can mix and match them. So if I had two defense on the boot pants and three attack on the chest plate, my overall stats would be three attack and two defense. Because what you could do is you could do this. You could do, uh, where was it? Uh, this one. So this is going to store the score. So I get, uh, there is nothing with zero attack, so I have zero. But if I had stuff that had multiple, um, let's see. Such give, at P, diamond, no, gold, golden chest plate. And then I'll give it ATK of one. And then I'll give myself uh, boots with ATK of four, five, okay? Now let's just imagine if I put these on and I put these on, right? If I go here, my ATK has one. I could store this onto a temporary scoreboard so then I can grab it from my chest plate, then grab it from my boots, which have five. That's what slot 100 is. And then I can take the five and the one and add them together to have total ATK. So you can do stuff like that. The trick then, uh, is down to um, optimization and that's a totally different question which I was going to cover today but I decided not to because it's just I, I would have to really organize a detailed video to properly get my points across about how to optimize for servers and stuff like that to make things work really well um, but basically you could use this now there's one other thing problem that comes up is uh, checking these numbers so I mean if I add them it'll keep adding so i'll have to reset it before i add it to get the final value so you would do like set my attack to zero then add all these things up and then when i come out i'll have the number and then you would loop it right but you got to be clever with your um with your code if you want to make it optimized somehow to figure out how uh deter find out a way to figure out when a player takes on and off armor or switches armor um you might be able to use this um one thing that you could do, now this is this might seem crazy, I don't know, I haven't tested it, but one thing you could do is you could use this thing here, the store something to a tag. You could have a tag on the armor called like, uh, you could have a tag called loaded zero, 
and you set the loaded tag equal to zero. So if they ever have an armor on that has a loaded tag of zero, then recalculate. And when it recalculates, it gives the loaded to all the armors. Um, the problem then would be resetting that loaded back to zero when they take the armor off. Uh, but again, you guys can, I'm just giving you some rough ideas. Maybe I'll come up with answers if I ever make an RPG style thing using this system. But hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, last video, which was literally just yesterday, I gave um, a suggestion to try and do a portal. And um, there was only one response. But I will show it anyway. I, I mean, it, I only gave the thing less than a day, so I wouldn't expect there to be really any in only a day. I just wanted to get this out because it's a Sunday. Um, but the one is from, it'll be easiest if I pull up Discord. Um, but this is where you can go to submit ones that you have. And I can easily see it. So I will have a new one for today, which would be, the one for today would be to try and implement a exactly what I was saying. Try and implement exactly what I was saying. One would be to implement a system that stores uh, stats from armor and adds all your stats on each armor piece up to give you a total attack, defense, whatever you want. I mean, you could just do attack to prove for proof of concept. Try and do it least commands possible. Um, the next one would be to make that system work so that it only activates once when I put on armor. That's a really complicated one, though. So I doubt anyone will be able to set that up. But anyway, so if you go to Discord and you join my server, there is a link in the description to join the Discord server. But you can go down to this creations thing and you can post what you have. So Sharky LP had a little portal here where um, he has the portal and then he just goes into it and teleports him up there. So he did the basic one. He didn't do um, too crazy, but he did managed to make it work and i applaud him for doing it so quickly anyways guys if you have any suggestions for next videos to do or any questions just leave it in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible but other than that thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one peace